everybody. You know why you're here. Let's just dispense with the pleasantries. This is the Voyager documentary update live show. We are here with some very special and amazing guests. First and foremost, the executive producer of 455 Films. You can't quite see him, but he is here for sure, all the way from the East Coast, Mr. David Zappone. Hey. Hello. <laughs> see, you heard him. And uh, we also have, everybody knows Lolita, so let's just go ahead and say Lolita Fajo. Yay, and my t-shirt is on. <laughs> Little context would be good there. <laughs> For anybody just listening. Uh, we also have a producer and editor of many of the documentaries, including this one to the journey, Mr. Joe Cornbrot. Hi, everyone. Hey. His shirt is on too. Uh, my name is Ryan <laughs> thank, T. Husky. Thank God. My shirt is on. Everybody's like, where did you get those awesome shirts? Well, I don't know if they still have them, but they were on sale at Target in uh, Van Nuys. And so, no, just kidding. Of course, Lolita had these made out for us, special for the cruise, and they look amazing, right? Yeah, they, they came out very good. I don't know. Very if you happy. I don't know if you want to say how we got them or, or who you made them through. Actually, they were made through Chase's charity, her um, coalition. So it was a, a dual, dual job there. Um, also, everybody that got our update, they know that we also have a little sneak peek that Mr. Joe Cornbrot uh, prepared. He, he is so good to you guys. Seriously, he's always preparing these sneak peeks and these I don't know where he finds the time, but stay tuned for that because it's really awesome. Um, first and foremost, I just wanted to get the conversation started. This is something I was thinking about today. Um, when you're when we're shooting, you know, the interviews and or when you're looking through the dailies, what is the overall emotion or mood that you are feeling not necessarily that the uh the interviewees are conveying or the story or whatever but is there some overall mood that is that that, that you're feeling are you feeling excitement are you feeling pensiveness uh well i'll i'll, I'll start that out and then hand yeah. it to joe um what i was shocked at was how many people have broken down mm. on camera just with the pure emotion and whether it's an emotion of nostalgia or, you know, whatever, it's just, I didn't expect this level. I've been doing these for a long time and for a lot of the shows. And I I've been struck by the level of emotion that people have shown on camera. That's, that would be my answer, Joe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That uh, was, yeah. I mean, we actually, um, we saw Robert Beltran. Yeah, get emotional. Not necessarily about uh, about Voyager, but um, you know, he was just thinking back to early life and his early life, and and a teacher, a theater teacher that was really important in his life, and you know, just kind of, I think he had the realization that oh wow, yeah, this is not a permanent thing. All of this, all, all of this is temporary. Right. And oh. um, you know, when doing all these films, you know. We're quite often we're asking people to think back on what they were doing 25 years ago and you know for the most part it was people were pretty happy with it but there is definitely um you know everyone experiences loss in a variety of ways uh and people and situations and that comes out in those interviews yeah i don't know i kind of halfway was surprised but not not completely surprised with the emotions that came out because I was there with him all those years, that long stretch we worked together and it was so long ago. So my emotions always run high with these things. And if you see people that you haven't seen in a long time and you start reminiscing and I, so I wasn't that surprised that there was so many tears, but the tears are good tears. They're mm -hmm. not, you know, that's, it's nice to see people being comfortable enough on camera to, to let go like that sounds like you're saying uh counterintuitively that the more time passes 
the more emotional these memories seem to get when they bubble back up to the surface. I think that's definitely true in wow. many ways for lots of things. But for this, it seems to be. And some of these people um, haven't seen each other in so long. So when we were had that whole week in Los Angeles where we were filming, you know, four to seven mm -hmm. people a day and they got to overlap and see each other. That was really cool to see that dynamic because literally some of them hadn't seen each other in 20 plus years. So mm -hmm. that was I think, really something special that we all got to witness. And we had, you know, we had some, we had Karen Westerfield was uh, doing makeup for that shoot. And, uh, you know, it was just everybody walked in and there's Jonathan West, who's, who we're working with, uh, you know, he's our, our, our DP consultant and, and, and we have Karen Westerfield there. So people are, feel like they were walking back into a Star yeah. Trek set. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, and as you'll see, we didn't, it, you know, we interviewed people from other shows, of course, from Star Trek. Um, so it, it's pretty exciting. You'll get to see some of those people pop up, maybe even in the sneak peek. Who knows? Who knows what <laughs> we're <with> this today? <laughs> you teasing the sneak peek. Um, yeah. All right. Well, since you're teasing it already, uh, everybody in the live chat right now, let us know what you want to see first. Do you want to see the sneak peek that Joe made or do you want to see some of the completed perks that will be shipped out as soon as we can? That's the question. Perks or peak? It's going to take a few seconds for these uh, to come out. Um, but everybody in the live chat, it's, it's awesome to see how excited people still are. You know, a lot of times... There's like a movement and everybody, you know, they get behind something and then a year passes and they're like, oh yeah, that, that thing, that's cool. You know, but everybody is just like super excited. Um, okay. All right. I, I, before you do that, uh, Ryan, I want to shout out to a couple of people that have helped yeah. us uh, with the doc. Uh, one, I saw uh, Melissa Longo's on there and she was uh, helped with the art department uh, for us at, on the Burbank uh, yeah, uh, shoot yeah. that we had last last year. So thank you, Melissa, and thanks for admiring the the cool posters. Uh, I got another one uh, over there too that I love. Nice. But um, and then you. I also I saw that uh, Kieran McGreevy is also on there and says uh, hello. And uh, Kieran has helped us with oh, all the him. documentaries. Uh, but uh, he was very instrumental uh, on the cruise, uh, worked very closely with us, and uh, he ran some camera for us and just did his usual magic. So thank you, uh, Karen. Oh, there he is. I see back him. From, yeah. uh, welcome back from Disney World. <laughs> uh, yeah. Comments. So if I hit this YouTube link, will it take me to the comments? Yes. I it will, but you... Yeah, but you gotta you gotta mute the the YouTube uh, window, otherwise you're gonna get feedback. Okay, never mind. I'll just I'll just go with you guys repeating things. So. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you guys want to go super meta, we can do this. Here are the comments. Oh, wow. oh it looks like people oh, want to see the perk. No, no, oh, no. Okay. Look at look at how many. Look at how many people are saying sneak peek, 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 sneak peek, 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 peek. peek. <laughs> yeah, right yeah. Oh, one perks, Kimber's fours. <laughs> That's peek, great. Peek, 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 yeah. peek, 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 peek. <laughs> well, I guess well, well, the it's neck peek. and neck. The, the sneak peek is a, is a perk of watching this. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it's a perky peek. And we'll uh, definitely talk about the cruise uh, a little later. And Kieran was, like Joe said, instrumental with that. Um, so, Joe, do you want to show the thing, the the sneak peek, or do you want me to? I got it pulled I up. Think I think you should probably do it. Joe. Okay, I think I've got it got pulled that. up here. Yep. It. Here it comes, everybody. Live and in stereo, maybe depending on what you're doing at home. Robbie Vignel, take one. Mark. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, hi. Bum, Good bum, to see you. Bum. Didn't hear you come in. 
I believe the first mention of Voyager and my being involved in the creation of it came from Rick Berman. Michael Piller and I decided that it would be great to have Jerry join us because we wanted to have a female captain and the thought was it would be great to have a female creator and executive producer as well. Now the truth is Rick Berman and Michael Piller did not need me to create Voyager but they perceived that they did because they wanted a woman. For once being a woman worked in my favor. I think my contribution was pushing them to cast Jean-Vierre Bougeot. Oh, Jean-Vierre. <laughs> oh, how I miss thee, Jean-Vierre. Well, you know, one of the things that made me want to be on the show was Jean-Vierre Bougeot would be the captain. And I think it was just a handful of days before that just hit a brick wall. So there I was on the bridge with uh, Rick Colby at the helm directing. He said, this is your living room. This is yours. It belongs to you. And I walked out. By God, it did. And they were all on the lip of the stage. The brass. Like this. Staring at me. And they continued to do that Lolita for the entire first season. I said, you're not going to win, boys. So you're welcome to come. But I'm going to win. And I did. Being on a series in the 90s, I was the only Asian male series regular. The only Asian male series regular on television. That's kind of shocking if you think about that. You're like, what? Is that real? Yeah. When Jennifer got fired, all of a sudden, the possibility that this is not going to be a seven year run for any of us was real. And all the things that come with being on a hit TV show for seven years and the knowledge that the studio is behind it running for seven years, all of that all went away for all of us. Didn't feel as safe anymore. It was sad to, to see um, Jennifer leave. Jennifer had a, had a soulful quality about her. There was a, a beautiful quality about her. But you got Jerry Ryan in, in, to replace. She was a great addition to the show. The Vulcan characters, people always uh, assume that they don't have emotions. Actually, they have a tremendous amount of emotions. The character's uh, culture uh, almost destroyed itself because of their emotions. When you play them, you want to just barely see what's under the surface, and you know it's there. All the Starfleet cast, they all have to be stalwart, brave, and true, but I got to play all these negative character characteristics that the audience weren't used to see coming out of a Starfleet officer. I could be cowardly, I could be self-involved, I could be completely pompous and overblown. And and then in the in, you know in the clutch, I could do my job well. I think what really contributes to our unique chemistry on Voyager is that everyone has a sense of humor. Everybody is very funny. They have fabulous and unique senses of humor. You don't know how to do a sound bite. You know what a sound bite is? Why should I know a how to do a sound bite? I don't have to pimp anything. My sound... stuff speaks for itself. No, it I don't doesn't. have to promote it. Doesn't. it you mean... Yeah. Why, when I can rely on you to do it so well? Okay, there you go. Okay, so in other words, as he did on Voyager for seven years, he's riding my coattails. That's so right. And, and happily. And happily, and indeed. freely, and doesn't even hide. He it. does all the work. I just scoot along next to him, and I get some of the credit. I know you take all of the credit. Well, so Captain Janeway and Chakotay were uh, getting so close, and then she saw a monkey and forgot all about me. He was a very attractive man, Robert Beltran, kind and funny, and a wonderful guy. But I think he found it dispiriting that uh, maybe not that we didn't have a romance. I don't think he cared about that so much as, as that the relationship between Chakotay and, and Janeway did not really intensify. I remember walking in one morning and Kate was already sitting in the captain's chair and we all came out 
And we, we were all there for the first rehearsal of the day. And Kate looks at all of us and she says, So, who got laid this weekend? When I play a role, I always have a secret that I have. And um, nobody knows it but me, but I can say it now. But my secret was that Neelix was in love with the captain. So if you watch the scenes, you'll notice that whenever she's talking, I'm just like gazing at her. Um, it was just something I had. And uh, I told her later on after we finished filming and stuff. Rick Berman, I, I said to him that very first day, I said, hey, Rick, by the way, I just want you to know, I want to direct. And he sort of laughed like you're laughing right now. <laughs> he laughed and he said, sure, sure. Maybe, you know, season five or six or something. And I said, no, I, I want to direct this season. Oh, yeah, this one. I meld. Very strong. It was a chance to be able to break out uh, Very. of the Tuvok mode and, uh, and to Why work as, as an actor, which I actually trained to do, uh, to show a range of emotions. <laughs> you know, I'm an admirer and uh, an acolyte of uh, Gene Roddenberry's. I remember his telling me that uh, the Starship Enterprise was a metaphor for Starship Earth. And the strength of this starship is its diversity coming together. We didn't have a woman as the captain. So to see that finally uh, in the Voyager uh, was wonderful to see Gene Roddenberry's vision being filled in more in detail. Wow. Hey. Wow. I could watch that for two hours, maybe on loop. So I, I was uh, reading the comments as that was being shown, and apparently we left out a couple people. Um, well, we didn't leave them out. Uh, we haven't filmed them yet. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have noticed that uh, Jerry Ryan and Roxanne Dawson aren't in the uh, in that video. Um, but I just want to address this now, so you all know we do have plans to 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 interview them uh, in the coming months. But uh, both of them have been working on productions. Uh, Roxanne was out of the country; has been out of the country. And uh, Jerry was on a closed set for many months that uh, was actually shut down a couple times because of COVID outbreak. So just know we're we're working on it, guys. Um, everybody will be represented in in uh, either through interviews or uh, by others reminiscing. And, and when I say that, we're primarily talking about Jennifer Lean, who we probably won't be able to get. But mm. uh, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to say, because I don't see the comments, but for some of you who don't know, because their names were not on the stick peak, that was Jerry Taylor, the one and only wonderful Jerry Taylor, and Rick Berman and Brandon Braga, because not everybody's familiar with what they look like. So mm -hmm. I think um, I just wanted to clarify that in case anybody wasn't sure who, the, who they and were. We've got a lot of the behind the scenes. Yes. That we've interviewed weren't in that. Um, yeah. And also, I mean, half of the Paramount executive team at the time, uh, I mean, we've gone deep, very, very, very uh, deep into the production. Well, if you haven't seen the comments, they are very positive and very plentiful. There's a lot of OMGs, always in capital letters, just to let us know that they mean it. <laughs> uh, I got two uh, big things out of that. Number one is that. Uh, Kate Mulgrew said Robert Beltran was an attractive man. And I just want to say right here on the record, he is still a very attractive man and everybody knows it. Great head of hair. I got to say that. <laughs> yes, well, they just saw him as he looks today. So. Yeah. And the ah. smoothest voice in television. Yeah. Um, um, I want him so badly to do those, uh, what are those uh, audio books? If he reads mm -hmm. Star Trek audio books, that's... Now, the other thing was, it is now Star Trek canon. Neelix loves Janeway. That's it. It's it's official. So all the JNs out there, go get them. <laughs> it's funny when, when uh, Picardo is talking about how he's able to, you know, be pompous, 
you know, all the different emotions. I remember at the time when I first watched um, Voyager, first run, I thought he was like Dr. Smith from Lost in Space. Am I alone in that? <laughs> but hmm. he he really had that kind of, you know, he was definitely not a Starfleet officer, uh, right. what you would expect. But yeah, that was just my my thing, I guess. I, I guess I'm dating myself by bringing up Dr. No, Smith. No, you're dating me too, Dave. I agree with you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, another little tidbit uh, in Kate's interview, you might have noticed uh, behind her was the Admiral Janeway uh, uniform from uh, the Endgame that she that Admiral Janeway wore. That's that's one of I think only two Dave's that exist. I believe, yeah, that's it. Wow, yeah. wow. That was uh, Jason, uh, one of the the tour promoters of Destination uh, Star Trek. Yeah, that was his, from his personal collection. Uh, yeah, Rob Cam twenty three asks, "How about Scarlett Palmer's who played Naomi Wildman?" We Man, tried. We sure hope so, but yeah, it's we did we reach tried. out. We yeah. Tried different ways to get in touch but many some several people, some people don't want to be don't want to be found i've found in this mm -hmm. process or even booking conventions which is what i do as you know some actors just don't want to be part of it and that's their you know that's fine of course so but uh it would be nice to have her but we've we've definitely tried you guys no yeah well we you know and and to us also as, as filmmakers of the you know making these these films, we do talk to a lot of the people behind the scenes in the art departments. We spoke to Rick Sternbach, we spoke to Doug Drexler, uh, you know, we spoke with Mike and Dees Okuda. We interviewed them, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, all these people are on camera talking about uh, uh, Daryl Baskin, who is one of the editors of uh of voyager as well as deep space nine and, and tng um you know so we we spoke to michael westmore you know we 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 really you know it's not just the actors that make the show it's the writers and the producers and the crews the the, the various departments um you know to us all of that's all of that is compelling so uh i mean we, we hope, spoke to uh, one of the production assistants that. The, the one of the pas that was fire. <laughs> we got, <laughs> yeah, we got Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that always really jumps out is just how interesting the stories are that come from people that were not in front of the camera. Like as you know, Star Trek fans, we all, you know, Lolita, you know better than anybody. The fans just want to see Tuvok. They want to see Captain Janeway. They want to see Wei Yun, right? But Honestly, and and by the way, that sneak peek just confirms how funny all of them are. You're right. They're just, they're all so funny and they're brilliant at what they do. But the, the behind the scenes people, they have such interesting and intricate stories that only they would know. You know, they were never interviewed by Time Magazine. They were not never on the cover of anything. They were just listening. They were experiencing and getting interviews from them is, is just gold. It's just been amazing. Absolutely. I know yes. people still want to hear me talk on stage after 30 years. I don't understand it, but I'm glad to be doing it. <laughs> they so. loved it uh, on the cruise, <laughs> Lolita. You know, yep. you were you were a, you are a rock star. So. <laughs> Yay. You in are my, a rock star. My t-shirt. See, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw somebody. Uh, some people asked if we would have had any uh, special guest stars on uh, uh, that we interviewed. Martha Hackett comes to mind uh, right off the bat as someone, and then uh, Scott um, McDonald. What Scott's Scott McDonald, McDonald. who was uh, Tosk, uh, right? Many. Well, he was Tosk on Deep, uh, Space, Deep Space Nine, Nine. but yeah. but, uh, but he he was uh, he he. Uh, he was in the pilot episode on the bridge. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he and he's one of the few uh, actors that got to work with Jean Pierre Bujold on the pilot. That's right. That's right. Let's not leave out George Takei, mm -hmm. maybe the biggest right. guest star of all. 
Yeah. Just saw on the sneak peek. Yeah. Yeah, he was on on the uh, the uh, was it the twenty or the thirtieth anniversary of Oof. Star Trek? No, it was the twenty fifth anniversary. Been, no, it would have been the thirtieth. Ninety. It would have been the thirtieth. Thirtieth. Yeah. Ninety six. Right. It was the ninety. Yeah. You guys yeah. notice how the the mood of the set changed that day when George Takei walked on. Suddenly, everybody's like, "Oh my god!" All right. George's here. How's my? <laughs> and he walks in, and yeah. he's so nice and so friendly. And there's really, you know, obviously he's not the kind of person that walks around and expects everybody to be, you know, act this way and talk to him this way. He's just such a a friendly and you know likable guy. But we're, you're still like, okay, this is George Takei, everybody, <laughs> right? And he talked about everything. I mean, I, yeah. I even asked him about the Howard Stern show and he gave us the whole, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> and then all day, everybody on sets practicing their oh my. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> yeah. oh. Are there other questions, Ryan? Yeah, let's see. Um, not a lot of questions. It's just a lot of people, a lot of exclamation points, not a lot of question marks. But uh, go ahead and throw out your question marks. Um, uh, Chess says, any guest stars to be interviewed? But I think we kind of started to yeah. answer that already. Uh, any other? And it's possible. I mean, we might get other, other guest stars before we're done. We have... One of our yeah. favorite Ferengis who did a little bit on Voyager, and he'd even yep. forgot. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's right. Uh, yeah. yeah, we, we had the Armin. And actually, we got a uh, famous Cardassian who was behind the camera on Voyager. Who? Uh, oh, that's right. Who directed uh, episode, yeah. a couple episodes of Voyager. Or actually, mm. one. Again, one, I think. Yeah. One, one, one. We yeah. have uh, Andy Robinson. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone's uh, favorite Cardassian Taylor. Well, you yeah, know, I had that. actually forgotten about uh, Armin being in Voyager as well. And I, then I think it was yeah. Joe said it to me, told me, he's like, Armin, you know, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. He's like, you know, he was in the pilot. I was like, oh, yeah, I kind of had to take my nerd card away for a couple of days. But Joe was gracious enough to give it back. But he's like, but don't uh, let it happen again. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, if people forget, you know, Voyager yeah. starts its voyage leaving Deep Space Nine. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why they're that's they they were the closest Federation ship that was able to go into the Badlands to uh, deal with the Maquis. But yeah, uh, there's some and we know that, what happened next. That may not have been necessarily guest stars, but like recurring characters, some like like Alice, uh, Alice Krigo, and and as you mentioned, oh. Martha Hackett. We did get uh, Alice, right? Yeah. yeah, there are a lot of people like that. Yeah, yeah, we forgot about Alice. Yep, we got her. She's amazing. Um, all right. Joe? Uh, I, just, I, I see somebody's asking, uh, a few people have been asking about HD clips. That's our plan, is to yep. remaster mm -hmm. the, to go back to the film negatives uh, and scan them and, and uh, hopefully master them in, in, not in HD, but 4K is, would be ideal. Um, but we have, to, we have to make the film first and figure out the clips that we're going to use so that will be that's one of the last things that will be done in the film you know we we frequently we use clips of the show to illustrate points or mm -hmm. you know show characters uh uh you know who they are and uh anyways so yes uh, the, the plan is and and we've committed actually to all you people that uh, we plan to, to to remaster the footage. So, and CBS, uh, they are Paramount Plus. Is, I think all things now are Paramount Plus. Uh, they uh, are on board for that as well. So, until okay. until we're told uh, we can't, we're going uh, under the assumption that we can. That's right. <laughs> Famous last words. Uh, do you want to uh, show off some awesome perks now? Oh, perks. Hmm. Some physical perks, well, that is. We've been uh, fulfilling I've, a lot I've, of I've, the, I've, uh, I've got this cutie right here. But that's <laughs> not what you're talking about. How long will it last in so, shipping? So, uh, <laughs> so pick a postcard 
Kenny postcards. These are uh, gorgeous. We, these are our postcards that were designed by Christian and David in Germany, the, the gentleman behind the DS9 uh, uh, teasers videos. And they, they, they did a lot of the 3D uh, animation on what we left behind. And Love they designed it. these for us. So uh, there's a, a set of 10 postcards that many of you will be receiving. And so these are the, the pretty cool designs. Wow. Uh, and they will also be uh, in a digital form. So you can, you can print out even more if you wanted to. And, uh, or use them as wallpapers and screensavers. And so, yeah. Some of, you, uh, some of you might have got these on the cruise. We brought a handful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were handing, handing them out to have some free swag. Uh, many of you who uh, backed us on day one, thank you. You'll be getting one of these cool day one pins. Yes. Can you hold them uh, up a little bit longer, Joe? Because I know people sure. right now are like looking at the timestamp. They're like, okay, 30 minutes in. When this is over, I'm going to go back and pause this video. <laughs> there we go. Amazing. That's day one. Uh, we have actually two of these, uh, one silver and one's gold. This is the more exclusive gold challenge coin cool. wow. uh, but it's the same design it's just one is a, a gold and one is a, a platinum or silver mm -hmm. looking one and then some of you I believe would have gotten this bonus pin which is a Borg 7 fully Borgified and how you would have gotten that I believe is if you bought was it all if you donated and received as a reward the full kit mm -hmm. the pin set is that right ryan i forget the uh so this is one sorry i was of, reading i was reading jr pool noticing lolita's Steelers glass and oh. yes it is <laughs> it is uh jr pool you are correct he's a big fan as well but sorry what was your question joe so the the bonus seven of nine as a borg was that uh how, yeah that how comes that, that comes with a complete set ah so if you just bought a set of five you you'd have to buy the one set with sin, sin set two of three that has uh seven slash annika but i'm just glad we got lawn Suter in there yeah grima worm worm tongue himself that's right and we also got uh aaron eisenberg as uh, car i forget uh, car, car yes thank you and that great episode with chicote mm -hmm. so these are uh uh the majority of our physical perks uh, uh we also have if you look if you look behind me all these boxes here those are all contain what i just showed you here so uh just just know that they're coming Joe's a hoarder, uh, by the way. I am a hoarder. <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple of uh, higher profile perks, physical perks, that uh, we are still waiting on. Uh, the uh, the T-shirts uh, we should be getting within hopefully the next uh, six weeks. And uh, our... Janeway coffee mugs. Oh, yeah. Uh those are be those are been manufactured in China and a couple of things have happened. Uh, the month of February was the whole month is Chinese New Year, so all the mm -hmm. factories shut down. So we were delayed by that. And then um if you've read the news lately, uh yeah, lockdowns. The the other thing that's going on besides the big one that everybody's yeah. concerned about is that uh in china there's been an uptick in covid and so that's actually closed some factories mm -hmm. and and stopped some trucking so we've been we've had communication with the factory in china and they told us early april uh they would be done with the manufacturing process and then of course that it has to get to us so um we we don't have an exact timetable when it'll be here but we are we're we're, we're ready for them uh, to say, hey, yeah, pay us the rest of the money and we'll ship them to you. So as soon as that happens, 
as soon as that we get that word, we will do that, and then we can uh, uh, resolve most of our major fulfillment for you guys. Mm-hmm. Just to make, just to be clear for everybody listening in, we're we're not holding the money hostage. <laughs> we're waiting until they are done manufacturing once they say okay these are ready to ship then they invoice us we pay them the rest and they ship them out uh and i was checking up on china the other day and it's true that their their covid numbers have spiked to the highest level since february of 2020 yeah it was like super high and then it dropped for two years and now it's Oh, and a couple more things. We have some deep cuts. These are uh, these were the perks that it was part of a uh, it, it was part of a stretch goal that we achieved thanks to the fans. These are deep cuts for your kitchens. It is a Neelix Chef's Hat and Leola root. They are magnets, and you'll know if there's a Star Trek fan in your hat in your house if they go, <laughs> "Is that a Leola root?" <laughs> it's it's going to be rare, but. They're a true Star Trek fan if they say that. I I have a question so again since I don't I haven't see the comments. How many of you are anybody coming on the away missions with us in May? That is we're question. really we're really working on those. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of a lot of great talent and actors coming to join us on some of those, and it's it's going to be really a lot of fun. We're mm-hmm. we're really looking forward to it. So I hope I hope we'll see some of you there. Yeah, so. surely we'll uh, we'll let them uh, speak up in the comments. I do want to say that Yvette Blackman says I am ready for my Voyager goodie box. She <laughs> is very very ready. Uh, so yeah, you want to talk about the away missions a little bit? Uh, JM says dinner. Uh, oh, that's going to be on the the first night. Uh, yep, Tuesday night dinner. We've got. Connor Trenier, uh, Nicole DeBoer, Dominic Keating attending, amongst others. So that will be a lot of fun. Um, uh, I'm really looking forward to Vasquez Rocks. I was talking to Larry Nemechek, who, by the way, I want to throw a shout out. Thank you to Larry. He's been so helpful to us. And he's actually at my house this weekend, he and his lovely wife, Janet. Um, but I was, I have not been to Vasquez Rocks in 25 years myself. And I used to go and, wow. you know, take people up there. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to all of it, but you, some of the you know, I've I never, know. I've never been to Vasquez Rocks. Oh, really? You're I've kidding. worked on projects. Yeah. I've worked on projects that filmed at Vasquez Rocks. I've driven by Vasquez Rocks. But you've never gotten out and done the. Yeah, thing. I've been no. there. I've cli- climbed that rock. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, really? Actually, Fun. You can actually climb. Yeah, right. Where yeah. Kirk, uh, there's I'm, another I'm set of series. there's another set of rock formations off the 118 in like Canoga Park uh, uh, yeah. area that 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 would some Star Trek would film there as well. And I've been there. I've uh, right off the freeway, right? You can see it from right the off the freeway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've been there much. I've I've filmed stuff there, and uh, I've just gone hanging out there. I've been there before. What What have they shot there for for Star Trek? I don't know specifically. I know that they filmed there. They filmed a lot of shows there because it was so close. Yeah, you know, and it looks awesome. Back, yeah, I mean, and back back in the the sixties when they were filming out there, you know, there wasn't nearly as many homes out there. It was a lot of more ranches and, and farms, uh, orange groves out there. We got to consider oh. that one eighteen one too in Canoga Park. Paging Larry Nemechek, he'll know, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, also, uh, Ryan, did you have you uh, sent out a blast about the concert that Tim put together for everyone on Friday night? Um, no, but no, no, we might as well say it right now. Um, everybody that's doing, uh, the away missions, we have a bonus additional special treat for all of you. Uh, Tim Russ will be playing, uh, that week in, uh, Hollywood and it'll be like a field trip. Yeah. We'll all go and support and cheer him on and let me tell you if you have not been to a tim russ crew concert it is so fun and that guy has more soul in him than all of idaho just kidding i love you idaho but (laughs) he's 
right? I mean, he's amazing. Yes, I see he, an angry face from Idaho. Uh, <laughs> Tim did this just out of the kindness of his heart. We were yeah. on the cruise and it kind of, he just said, let me do this. When are the dates again? And uh, it's also at a very famous place in, in Hollywood. So, mm, which is I, an extra bonus too. Yeah. At the, yeah, at the, the famous Cantor's Deli. So, mm-hmm. yeah. The, the, so the bar the bar attached to canners the kibbutz yeah. that's right so, so he's that's doing that just for the fans uh you guys are getting an extra bonus there might be a couple other little bonus things that we're trying to throw in and that's what i'm most looking forward to with the away missions is just it's going to feel like a convention it's going to be you know five or seven or eight days of just hanging out with star trek fans and doing star trek stuff I'd say it feels more like a cruise than a convention when you talk about that many days. <laughs> it's a long yeah. convention, but it will be fun. And Dave's going to be showing people around. Uh, what are you most looking forward to, Dave, in the uh, away um, Probably uh, Case, Casey mm. uh, in uh, Paso. That whole thing is going to be fun. Yeah, me too. Yeah. That's Paso Robles. Uh, Casey Biggs Casey lives Big. there. Uh, he and the Enterprise Blues Band are doing a performance for Yep, Vaughn and Steve. Yep. Yeah. So and lots of good wine. That was yeah. a uh, that was a Lolita creation. You guys, Lolita was like, "Do you think? Do you think fans, Star Trek fans, would want to hang out with uh, Casey Biggs at a winery, drink wine, you know, in the springtime?" Yes. And watch the Enterprise Blues Band play a show, and you know, just kind of hang. Is that? It? And we're like, yeah, yeah. Star Trek fans would love that, <laughs> and they got swept up in like five hours. Really, the same mm-hmm. thing with like the party before the cruise. That was a, a really good thing we did, and that mm-hmm. got bought up quickly. So, thanks to all of you guys for donating so generously, too. By the way, mm-hmm. couldn't be doing this without you. Definitely. Uh, speaking of which, we only have a couple minutes left. Uh, do you guys have any final thoughts or things that you'd like to put out there uh, to the fans that are watching right now and have been so supportive for about a year now? Yeah. Uh, I think I said, yeah, thank you again. Yeah. Uh, I, we, you know, we, we were, uh, you know, we were just on the cruise and um, we had a Voyager panel. And we were going up against the Discovery panel that was going on, which, you know, that's they're in a big theater, 1,400 people in that theater. And, yeah. you know, we were, we were in the, the, the B stage, which is, is fine. It was nice. And I would thought there would be maybe 50 people there. And there were a few hundred people there. Hundred. So, yeah. uh, you know, so that was, that was pretty amazing to me. Um, thank you for your enthusiasm and support, those of you that were there. Um, uh, and I think that's just indicative of, you know, this whole campaign that we had to raise money to make this film and, you know, the records we broke, you know, all of it, you know, is, is because of you. So, you know, thank you. Uh, you know, we love making this content and we love that you seem to love watching it. So as long as, uh, we can keep doing it and you keep wanting to watch it we'll do it mm-hmm. and uh, real quick on that subject uh, i know dave's definitely got something to say but on that subject can we just give a big shout out to ecp and the people at the cruise that were yes. so good to us and really their their hospitality and and they're they're great to work with we really appreciate them right and they've been, we've been, this is our second cruise with them. They've been so generous to the documentary. So it's been wonderful. Mm-hmm. So our leader, Dave, what do you want to wrap up? Yeah, for me, you? just to, it's been the scope of this uh, journey. Yeah. Uh, I mean, building the, that incredible set in Burbank, uh, you know, essentially a replica of Voyager's holodeck. To going to London, the cruises uh, were, Joe, I, I guess maybe we shouldn't, let's not even, we'll tease, but I'm not going to say exactly where Joe is going. Uh, well, Garrett said it on stage. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, Joe, then, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's yeah. the scope of this thing. It's it's for a documentary. I mean, this is becoming yeah. like a, a production schedule of a feature film. 
It's it's yeah. pretty amazing. It's yeah, pretty amazing. Jonathan, for whatever what they're all alluding to is uh, Jonathan West and myself are going to meet uh, Garrett in Bordeaux, France. And then we're going to go to uh, Nova Space, who uh, work with the European Space Agency. And uh, we're going to have uh, Garrett go up on a zero-G flight, and uh, he's going to do some free floating. Uh, he might have some uh, space uh, vehicles with him that uh, you might recognize. And he's wow. going to talk to some scientists uh, uh, that are conducting experiments because, you know, Voyager was a a uh, a uh, science vessel and uh so garrett's were and they conducted experiments and garrett's going to go up on a, a science vessel that's uh conducting experiments that will hopefully one day lead to a uh, voyager type ship and this and is nothing that was just set up joe that we're phil i mean we put this together because the european space agency reached out to us mm -hmm. and said yeah. we want to help with this documentary. So it's not like this is just something Garrett was going to do. And we're, we're tagging along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the way so many people are like, you're making a Voyager documentary. How can we help? And we're like, well, <laughs> I mean, since you offered. <laughs> uh, well, it's, you know, it's so wonderful. You know, you know, the, there's so many people in the sciences uh, and a lot of them that, that uh, work at NASA and the European Space Agency that are just such big fans of Star Trek, of all Star Trek. But, you know, many, many of them love Voyager uh, specifically. And, uh, yeah, they've, they're fans and they've come forward to help us, you know. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, Pete Bisrig uh, at SanDisk, who... Uh, you know, we've done some panels for 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 uh, SanDisk slash Western Digital, um, but they were big supporters of us as well, and uh, they donated uh, our hard drives for us to store all this this footage that we've been filming. So I, I just want to give them a shout out, and you can see some of those panels that uh, Luke and myself have done for uh, B and H on their uh, B and H site or their Facebook page. But yeah, SanDisk, awesome. Can't can't make this film without storage, and they make great storage. So, thank you. That's true. <laughs> the storage, <laughs> it's it's just like mountains of storage. Uh, Dr. Mohammed Noor says the Voyager panel on the cruise was great. A lot of people are echoing those sentiments. I also want to give a shout out to the tip of the spear, Mr. David Zapone, because he continues to make these documentaries that the fans love, I myself love. And it's kind of humbling to know that there's somebody out there that's just like on a mission to just keep making the best Star Trek documentary films the world, nay, the Quadrant has ever seen. And I just want to thank you, uh, Dave Sapone, from the thank fans you, for always doing that. Yes. Dave, thank nice you. And yeah. thank you, thank you for bringing me along on the journey. To the journey. <laughs> to the journey. <laughs> Sorry, mind. Cerulean oh. Blue says, "OMG, have fun on the vomit comet." I think that's in <laughs> reference to that. Yes. <laughs> that's, well, what, that's what NASA calls it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's funny. That, I don't uh, think they. Yeah. I don't think the ESA likes to refer to it as the vomit comet. But that's exactly yeah. what it is. If yeah. I was uh, uh, maybe a decade younger, I would have loved to have gone on it. But yeah. uh, at this point, I'm happy that Garrett's going on it. Jonathan and I are, are going to stay on the ground, and uh, we'll be there with cameras to get his reaction as he comes off. As he so. gets off, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and and he'll be up there for what, Joe? It's like it's over an hour, right? 90 minutes? It's like, I think it's like, no, I think it's almost it's like two and a half hours oh wow okay it's even yeah long. maybe almost almost three hours you know for, it takes about i think about a half hour for them to take off and get up right into, right to level off sphere. and then they do 30 parabolas you know where they yeah. they go up and then they dive down and then that, that dive down for about a minute and 20 seconds is the i need to get some drama mean before you finish that sentence man <laughs> yeah and then <laughs> and then and then they level off at the bottom and then i guess that's when there's like double gravity 
So it's like instead of zero G, you're like stuck to the floor. Mm-hmm. Oh, go back God. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, one final thing. I know we got to run, but there's something uh, that I said we would go back to and I forgot to bring it back. But Joe, can we just give a special thank you to the people that helped shoot uh, <laughs> on the uh, the Star Trek cruise? Katie, Kieran. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Katie, Allie. Katie, I, Katie Wicker, Kieran McGreevy, who are our camera people and katie was also helping us produce uh my wonderful wife allison crease who uh, was doing sound and uh, and also helping me uh produce and keeping me sane <laughs> as sane as i can be um so they were great and we want to shout and lolita and and diane troop who was helping lolita but also helped us so we want to give a shout out to them and then we want to give a shout out to uh, entertainment uh, productions and chris and joey there and and uh, i know there's other people that uh you you can fill in but we couldn't have done it without them and uh want to thank uh you know john van sitters at paramount plus and all the all the people that have helped uh facilitate all the stuff that we're we're doing make it easy for us we can't really do it without them as well so thank you all absolutely yes great awesome so uh hopefully kieran didn't leave like five minutes ago saying hey they said they were going to come back to me i'm leaving <laughs> well, kieran now his, was head's awesome. the, his head's gonna be this big now <laughs> uh anyway so we got to run, but uh, David Zapone, Olita Fajo, Joe Cornbrot, and uh, the entire team for the Boyder documentary. Uh, we want to thank everybody at home watching and supporting. Uh, just keep, just keep uh, liking and retweeting and watching Voyager. And pretty soon, you're going to keep getting some updates that are going to make you more and more and more excited. And uh, a lot of people are talking about the vomit comment, but we're moving on, guys. Sorry. Yeah. And I want to say thank you to Ryan for putting this all together today. Yes, uh, Ryan. Every thank time you, you do Ryan. Event, so thank you so much. And My I did. Pleasure. I did. I, I I left out a big shout out. Ryan was on the cruise with us as well, and, yes. and Ryan helped immensely. So oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, good time. Yeah. It was a good like, time. <laughs> oh yeah. And I Ryan still haven't recovered. Me either. <laughs> for spreading the word. You've been spreading the word, and we we thank you for that. Thanks, Dave. All right. Uh, So everybody at home is like, are they just like one big happy family? Gross. And we're like, yeah, sorry. (laughs) Anyway. That's what Star Trek does. (laughs) Yeah, totally. All right. So we got to run. Everybody stay tuned. The very next video after this, which is starting in a few minutes, is a panel discussion with Lolita, myself, Sirach, and you may have heard of him, Mr. Garrett Wong. And Megan Elise, half of the Delta Flyers, will be joining us to talk about Voyager documentary, talking about Voyager itself, talking about the Delta Flyers and podcasting. It's going to be great. That's up next. Check the description box of this video for that link. Just click the link and it'll be right there. It's so easy. Anyway, thanks very much, Joe, Lolita, and Dave, everybody at home. We will see you next time. Thank you so much for the support. We talk about you all the time and how much we love you. See you around. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone.